Hi everyone, I'm Michelle Kelly. Welcome to Be In The Change. I'm gonna get started by reciting my inspiration. Our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, which most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people will not feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us, it is in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give others permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Marianne Williamson. I'd like to say welcome to everybody who's watching me for the first time and welcome back and thank you to everybody who's been on this journey with me. I started in 2019 stating out loud that I was breaking up with fear, I was breaking up with shame, and I was breaking up with guilt, followed by a weekly video. 2020 was to be kinder and more compassionate to myself and others. And 2021 has been to break up with processed sugar, which you guys, I have managed to do the first two resolutions. Um, I don't wanna say perfectly because I'm not perfect, but this year, the sugar thing, that has been the hardest breakup of my life. Like, so is fear, shame, and guilt it's still going on and it's still happening, but it is a lot less. And, you know, I'm so used to beating the shit out of myself for things that I haven't done or haven't been able to do easily as opposed to acknowledging all the things that I have done. And um, I can, it's easier for me to see all the things I haven't done and things I need to be better at and things I need to work on. And, you know, the one thing I'm working on is dropping the baseball bat and picking up the feather and being kinder and more loving and compassionate to myself. And it still is hard. And, you know, it's funny when I sit down to do these videos every week, I don't, when I look at myself in the mirror, I look so much different to myself than when I sit down and see myself in this camera. And when I see myself in this mirror, I'm like, oh my God, I look old. I look tired. My face is still breaking out and I haven't had sugar. Um, you know, I really like see myself when I look in this mirror and it's so much, it, camera it's like a mirror because it's reflecting back to me but i you know i think my vision and my perception is distorted and how i see others i wish i could see myself like that easily so like when I look at other people, and I was a hair colorist for a long time, and when you're a hair colorist, really picky people find you or found me. But they found me because I'm a really picky person too. And I never minded that. But what started to happen is I helped people look better on the outside, but how I viewed people started to change and I now can see people I see your heart and not just your physical appearance I can see I can see people on a soul level so I'm not staring at people's hair I am not or lack thereof I am not staring at what kind of car they have or what kind of purse they have um and I used to I used to think when you had, when your outside looked great, that your inside must be good too. And what I found out through working um, in the beauty industry is we're all the same. A lot of us have tried to 
disguise the outside or disguise the inside by making the outside look good. So I've been very fortunate to be in the beauty business that I was able to color my hair. I was able to get manicures and pedicures and facials and I was able to take care of the outside of myself. But the other gift that I was given to was the gift of recovery. And December 26th, I was able to celebrate 32 years of sobriety, which is a miracle and a gift. And I'm going to cry because it has been a, a huge gift, but it didn't always feel that way. It felt like a curse. And um, a lot of things in my life I've had to experience before other people did. And a lot of times when I experience things before other people, I looked at it as there must be something wrong with me instead of I meant to be a leader. I meant to make the map and not be a map follower. And, and I had to be for a while, but things always happen to me sooner than later. So like when, a lot of times people in recovery, they're like, God, I wish I got here sooner. I was like, God, I wish I got here later. I didn't want to be the first one. I didn't want to be what looked like the pain in the ass. I didn't want to be the one who was the leader, but I'm meant to be a leader. And I now know that. And part of the process of being a leader is being rejected it is uh, made to feel like there's something wrong with you or with me because I'm the first one that things happen to. I used to go to the doctors. I would, before I had my first neck surgery, there was something so wrong and it was in my shoulder blade. So I thought that was my back. So I kept telling the doctor, there's something wrong. My back hurts, my back hurts. And here the pain was radiating into my shoulder blade. It was coming from my neck, but I didn't know it because it was in my shoulder blade. So I thought it was my back. Well, I went to have an MRI. Well, as soon as I laid flat on the table, the pressure came off of all of the nerves and it didn't show up in the picture. Michelle, we've never seen this before. I ended up having chest pain. It was, it was horrible. And what happened is they had to do a different test. They did find it. And then when the doctor did the surgery, he's like, it was really bad. And I'm like, I told you. But I was the first person that this, um, that they saw this in so far. I used to think when you're the first person, there must be something wrong with you instead of there's something right with me. I meant to help people learn and I'm here to teach them. And when I am around people who can't hear me, and how I can tell when people can't hear me is, they um, twist it around and make me feel like there's something wrong with me. And what I realized is, you know, you can't get a hug from a person who has no arms. A lot of people are walking around with no arms thinking they can give hugs. And this is, you know, a hypothetical. It's not realistic, but most people think they can hug you because they have arms. And some people, I can see the people who don't have arms and they can't hug you. So um, what I've learned with when I'm around people that make me feel like there's something wrong with me because I'm the first person something happened to, I realize these are not the people that are going to help me. These are the people who can't support me and I need to find new people. But what it feels like is it feels like I'm being rejected. It feels like there's something wrong with me instead of no, I meant to lead the way and, um, and I'm a leader and not a follower and it's a hard job, but I realized that God gave it to me for a reason and I'm learning how to embrace it instead of reject it, which is what 
what I had to do in the beginning. I think a lot of times, the first time I hear something, the first time I know something, my process is to deny it, to reject it, and get mad at the person who's given me the message. So I realize since I've done that with others, that's what others are gonna do to me. And when I get that rejection, I feel it because I still have a heart and I'm still connected to myself. And just because I know all this stuff about other people doesn't mean I don't feel it or that I don't get rejected or that it doesn't hurt. I also realize it can hurt and I'm gonna be okay and I can move on anyway. So I want to say Happy New Year to everyone. Um, I'm still trying to decide what my New Year's resolution is going to be this year. Um, I'm sending you all lots of love. Stay safe, stay tuned, and I will see you next year.